Everybody, Jeremy Bernanski here. It's Monday morning. It's 10 a.m. PST. That means it's time for another brand new episode right here on YouTube of Bernanski's vlog. Before we jump into this week's episode, because we have a lot to cover this week, we're going to go ahead and check to make sure that we have a good green light that indicates that YouTube has a good solid stream from us here and we can get this week's episode started. So it looks like we do. We'll give everybody a second to hop in, and then we will be right back to start this week's brand new episode of Bernanski's vlog right here on YouTube. And we are back. Thank you, everybody. Let's make sure that. All right, we're good to go. We are back. So thank you, everybody, for joining this morning. I'm Jeremy Bernanski. This is Bernanski's vlog live right here on YouTube. Now, we've got a lot to cover. We're going to talk some movie news, movie reviews, and a little bit more. Just real quick, right at the top, let's just kind of lay out what the format is going to be today, because like I said, we got a lot to talk about. So in the subject title, there was this thing going around Twitter where you remake a movie with Muppets, but you keep one of the actors in the movie. So we're going to do that later in the show. I'm going to give you some of my ideas for what films I would like to see remade uh, with Muppets and one original star. Plus, we're going to take a look at some box office report numbers. We'll take a look and see what you guys were watching because I got out to the theater to see two films this weekend. That was Skyscraper and Hotel Transylvania 3 Summer Vacation. So we'll get into those reviews a little bit later. Then we're going to take a look at what's arriving in theaters, what's arriving on DVD and Blu-ray for your home theater. Certified Rad, my personal favorite segment. This week, it's a little sad, but also uplifting all at the same time. Kind of weird, but still awesome. Definitely Certified Rad. So stay tuned for the end of the show because that's what we'll be talking to Certified Rad. But before we do that, I wanted to just jump in real quick because we have, uh, if you are you know, part of the whole movie fan community online, right? Which I'm sure you are if you're watching this show. Uh, I logged into Twitter the other day and like my feed with all of the people in California that I follow uh, that talk movie news and talk movie business stuff and movie entertainment, everything, right? The whole Hollywood scene. Uh, one of the guys that has been around for a long time who have actually had the pleasure of meeting a couple of times, John Schnepp has taken fatally ill and he's hospitalized. And as far as I can tell from Twitter, he has been rendered unconscious. He's in critical condition. Thoughts and prayers are going out to John Schnepp right now and Holly as well. His lady over there who's trying to take care of him and stay strong for him. Very important. Um, John, I've had the pleasure of meeting a couple of times uh, over the course of the years. Uh, here's a picture of us a couple of years ago. This is me, him and Chris Gore. This was back at Phoenix Comic Con. Now, since this picture... The three of us have lost a ton of weight. So, John, I know that if you're unconscious, you can't see this, but you can hear it. I know that because I grew up with a grandfather who was pretty much unconscious. And so we'd have to go to the hospital. Like whenever I'd come to Southern California, come into West Covina, Hacienda Heights, we'd go into the hospital to visit him because he was a World War II veteran. And then as everything that happened with his surgeries and everything like that, after he came back from getting blown up overseas, Eventually, that kind of took over. It rendered him unconscious. So I grew up with uh, one of my grandfathers was a vegetable. So we would go to the hospital and we would visit him and we just talk to him because the nurses said that they can still hear, even though they can't really respond. So if you are listening to this, Mr. Schnepp, uh, you have lost a tremendous amount of weight, which takes a lot of strength, a lot of mental energy and a lot of willpower. So just kick that brain into overdrive, do the best you can and let your body know that you are still in control of it and you are going to fight whatever is happening uh, inside of you right now that is just trying to do its worst to you. So keep fighting that. Here's another photo of us um, a year later. This is actually in California. I don't really remember much of this evening and it's not because of the drinks. It was because I literally woke up at 4 a.m and then drove to California, it was a six hour drive, um, and then did the, the con there, I think it was Stanley's Comic Con, 
And then after all of that was over, I'm still up, still awake. Then after that, met up, met up with everybody afterwards. So this is a picture of me, John Schnepp, Perry Nimeroff, and Dennis. Um, I, I really don't remember this because I was super, super tired. And then the long drive plus walking the floor and taking photos of all the cool cosplayers. Whew, long day. But it looked like we had a good time. So, John, if you're listening to this, keep fighting, buddy. We've got more good times ahead of us for sure. Definitely going to want to keep you around for as long as possible. Um, in the bottom, uh, his, his lady, Holly, actually put up a GoFundMe. So in the bottom of this show, uh, in the description box, if you click the link, it, the link for the GoFundMe is there. Um, they're asking for help because uh, medical bills, as most Americans know, are insane. So they're looking for some medical assistance. So if you can, click the link, go to the GoFundMe page, and then make whatever donation you can to help out John and Holly. Holly, I've met you once. You seem like a really cool chick. I hope that everything is working for you and you've got a great support system out there while you take care of John. Uh, stay strong. You seem like a strong, independent, confident woman when I met you. I'm sure you can handle this. And again, I hope you have a strong support system out there to really just kind of help keep you lifted in this dark time because this is definitely going to be some work. So hopefully you guys can check out the GoFundMe. Again, best wishes to John. As far as I know, you guys aren't religious. So let's just say, may the shield of the seraphim, right? Watch over you and protect you and make sure that nothing else hits you. And then may the winds of Watum wash and just carry out any of the illnesses that are hitting your body right now. I know you're going to get that Doctor Strange reference, uh, Schnepp. So there you go. If you haven't, we'll give you a plug as well on the show. This is the very first movie I ever reviewed. This was three years ago. The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened. Holly and John both, using their own money, put this documentary together. Definitely recommend you check that out. I think you can get it online still. Um, or you can just get the digital download. But definitely check it out. The death of Superman lives what happened. So John and Holly, stay strong. Hope you guys got the support you need out there. And again, for everybody else, hit the GoFundMe page and go check out that because that is definitely going to help them in this troubled time. All right, so let's go ahead and move into this week's show. Uh, we are going to be taking, like I said, we got a lot to talk about. Um, and then also, let's just get the commercials out of the way too. So find us on Twitter, Bernanski's Vlog. Find us on Stardust, Bernanski's Vlog. Stardust is where I do all of the movie trailer reviews. We're getting close to 200 movie trailer reviews on there. Lots of content. Definitely check us out on Stardust. And then for everybody watching this right now, if this is your first time, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Hit the bell so you get the notifications. And then if at any point you enjoy the show, go ahead and give me that thumbs up because the thumbs up helps people who like movie related shows find this movie related show right here on YouTube. All right, that was a long winded, whew, out of steam. All right, let's go ahead and move into the news segment right now. Just kidding, before we do that, I'm gonna take a quick drink and then we're gonna get into the news. All right, so we are gonna take a look at the weekend box office uh, real quick. And just check out what everybody was watching this weekend. As I said, I saw Sky Skyscraper and I also saw whew, Hotel Transylvania 3. So both of those films, those reviews are coming. But what were you guys seeing? We're going to take a look at the weekend box office and we're going to talk about it. If this is your first time watching, all of the news articles that we're going to talk about are also in the description box below if you want to follow along. So just expand the box Hit those links and you can follow along with us right there. All right. So on the show, we go number five to number one for the weekend box office. So coming in at number five, we have Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom at 15,515,000. Number four, Incredibles 2 at 16,220,000. Number three is Skyscraper at 25,485,000. Coming in at number two is Ant-Man and the Wasp at 28,840,000. And coming in at number one was Hotel Transylvania 3 Summer Vacation at 44100000 So we've got two films that opened up this weekend that you'll be hearing about later, right? Skyscraper and Hotel Transylvania 3 that are in the top five. The Rock, big name, mega movie star, right? Action movie star. Everybody likes going to see his films. Him coming in at number three might surprise some people. Uh... I'm not really surprised it didn't come in at number one. It's summertime. Families are going out to see the movies. Hotel Transylvania 3 is an established franchise. The sequels 
right? People seem to enjoy them. It's got a really great voice cast. You'll hear my reviews for both of these films later. Um, the high five ratings, if you're familiar with the show and how I rate movies, the high five ratings may surprise you in general for who got more high fives. But Hotel Transylvania 3 and Skyscraper, very different movies, but they both knew what they wanted to set out to achieve. And I think they both achieved their goals. But as far as box office is concerned, I'm not really surprised that Hotel Transylvania 3 took the number one spot. Again, like I said, summertime, families are going out to the movies, an established franchise. Everybody likes these characters. It's fun time at the film for all of for everybody, right? Because it's a cartoon that moves across the generations. So the kids enjoy it. They give something for the parents to enjoy with some of the jokes and the humor. It's a Sony movie. So they got like the more modern music in it that everybody's familiar with and can kind of dance and groove to. So, yeah, not surprising that that took number one. Ant-Man and the Wasp coming in at number two over Skyscraper to me is a little bit surprising because I thought at least Skyscraper would come in at the number two spot and you'd see one, two, and then Ant-Man and the Wasp at number three, most likely. So Ant-Man and the Wasp coming in at number two, I think really speaks to how good of a film that was. Like I said, if you haven't seen my review, you can check that out on the movie review playlist on this page. Uh, that's waiting for you. But I really enjoyed Ant-Man and the Wasp. I thought that overall the film by itself was a better film than Ant-Man. So I thought they actually increased uh, the quality from Ant-Man to Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, in my review, I kind of compared it to Thor, whereas Thor was awesome. Thor 2, The Dark World, not so great. It's the reverse for Ant-Man and the Wasp. Ant-Man was good. It wasn't like Thor, The Dark World bad, but it was good. It was entertaining. But Ant-Man and the Wasp actually took it up and kicked it up a notch. And I really thought they they improved the quality overall for the characters, the story, everything. I just had an issue with Scott's character, uh, which is Paul Rudd. I had an issue with his character a little bit, just kind of seeming a little bit dumber than he was in the first film, but less intelligent, if you will. But overall, I thought the film itself was a much better film than Ant-Man. Uh, so Skyscraper coming in number three. Surprising. Stay tuned for my review. That's dropping here after the news. Incredibles 2. I loved Incredibles 2. I've been waiting for this uh, sequel for a long time. The sequel did not disappoint me. My review is up in the movie review playlist for Incredibles 2 if you want to get even more information. I just thought this was a grand slam. This wasn't a home run. This was a grand slam. I really, really liked The Incredibles 2. Both films, I think, are just very well done as far as story structure goes, as far as character development. Who's the bad guy? What is his motivation? How is the family going to come together using their unique gifts and powers? Right. But also that family chemistry of like kids bickering with each other, sibling rivalry. Right. But also still coming together to work with the parents to save the day. Just fantastic stuff in both films. Definitely recommend you check out Incredible. Even if you don't have kids, go see Incredibles, too. It's a really good movie. Um, and then we've got Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom again. I'm the odd man out. Faithful watches of the show. You know, I was not I was not wowed by Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I was very disappointed in the film. My review is up on the channel in the movie review playlist as well if you want to check that out. But as far as Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom goes, still being in the top five, I don't get it, but I get it. A lot of people like this movie. It's like the Transformers movies. They make a ton of money. I'm not really wowed by those films either. I don't understand how they make as much money as they do. I do not understand how Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is making as much money as it is. That being said, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it because you guys are getting out to the theater and you're supporting the films you like, which is important. So there you go. Top five, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, Incredibles 2, Skyscraper, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Hotel Transylvania 3, Summer Vacation. Real quick, just to round out the top 10. Coming in at number 10, Ocean's 8. Number 9, Uncle Drew. Number 8, Sicario, Day of the Soldado. Number 7, Sorry to Bother You. Number 6, The First Purge. Real quick, Sorry to Bother You. I really want to check this film out. And that's a little, it's more of like an indie limited, not limited, but not as many theaters, right? Because Sorry to Bother You is only in 805 theaters. That's it. When you look at something like Ant-Man and the Wasp, 4,000, Hotel Transylvania, 4,000, Skyscraper, almost 4,000. And then you have, sorry to bother you, less than 1,000, and it's in the top 10. That means people are getting out to see this movie, and then they're going right back into the theater to see this film again. So great job for uh, sorry to bother you and everybody that is attached to that film. Impressive, impressive stuff. All right, let's move into the first news story here coming to us from The Hollywood Reporter. Again, all of these links whoop, right down there in the description box. Punch that little arrow. 
It'll expand everything and you can follow along. We have a new zombie comedy coming to us from Focus and it is called The Dead Don't Die. And right now, so far, just get ready for this cast, okay? Bill Murray, Tilda Swinton, and then Selena Gomez, Steve Buscemi, and Adam Driver. Wow, what a powerhouse. This is stacked. Now, this is coming to us from Focus, right? And Focus has done a lot of really great films. It looks, it's a, it's supposed to be a zombie comedy by Jim Jarmusch. I hope I pronounced that right. And the only thing that's released so far is a photo of Murray, Savini, and Driver dressed up as cops. And it's going to be by Focus and Universal Pictures. So that's all that we really know about this, except for the cast. So what I like about this story is, A, the cast. I like seeing Bill Murray come back. I like him doing these roles where it's like comedy, but still kind of serious. That's that really kind of awkward, dry humor. I think this might kind of lend itself more to that. I'm not really familiar with... Uh, the director here, I looked up his stuff on IMDb and I don't believe I've seen any of his films. So uh, I'm kind of like, oh, let's clearly there's something that they see from this guy and what he can deliver as far as stories go. So I'm curious to see like what he's able to deliver with this kind of zombie comedy with all of these people. And then I was like, well, if it's focused, maybe it's going to be something similar to like what we got with Hot Fuzz, right? Where it's like the police and the zombies kind of all like going or not zombies. That was Shaun of the Dead. But you have like the police in this small town, like dealing with these crazy people, maybe the crazy people remove those insert zombies. And it's going to be like a mix of Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead. Who knows? I think it could be cool. I really like this cast. Um, Selena Gomez, I'm not really too familiar with her acting wise. She does a good job in the Hotel Transylvania movies as a voice actor. But as far as like her on screen and like doing things on screen as an actor. I'm not really too familiar with her. So I'm looking forward to seeing what she can do like stacked up with these powerhouse talents, Tilda Swinton, Adam driver, uh, obviously Bill Murray, Steve Buscemi. I mean, this is, this is really shaping up into something nice. Looking forward to getting more information from it. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this cast first, and then let me know what you think about a new kind of zombie comedy cop film with this cast. Right. Do you have a favorite performance by any of these actors? Throw all of those thoughts in the comments section below. And real quick, just to remind everybody, if you're like, well, what has Focus Features done? They're getting ready to release The Black Klansman. They're getting ready to release Mary of Scots. Uh, they also did uh, Phantom Thread. They did The Darkest Hour, Thoroughbreds, Victoria and Abdul, Atomic Blonde. There's a lot of films. If you just pull up their website, you can go through their catalog I know you've seen most of these films if you're faithful watchers of this show because you're a movie fan, right? And you've, you're probably going to go through and you're like, wow, I didn't even realize Focus Features did that many films. They do. They're usually pretty great. I have a lot of faith in Focus. When I see Focus is doing something, my ears go up, my eyes get a little bigger, and I'm like, ooh, this could be good. So, yeah, hopefully we'll stay tuned. What's your favorite Focus feature? Throw it in the comments below. All right, next up is coming to us from Empire, and this is Zombieland's cast is going to reunite for the sequel and Ruben Fleischer is coming back to direct. And okay, so this is big news, right? Cause Zombieland was a really good like horror comedy. Surprisingly, I'm not even sure what took me into the theater except for the cast. Cause I was like, man, it looks like a horror movie, but it's a comedy. Maybe it'll be good. And honestly, I think I went just because of the cast because when you've got, you know, Emma Stone, Woody Harrelson, Jesse Eisenberg, like, that's a really good lineup. And then also you add Abigail Breslin and now they're all coming back and it's going to be the 10 year anniversary. I didn't even realize it had been 10 years since this film came out. That's crazy, but it's coming back to be released on the 10 year anniversary. So I'm thinking the only reason I went to see this to begin with was because of the cast and Ruben Fleischer. So I'm happy to see that they're all coming back since that was probably the initial reason that even got me into the theater because I looked at the cast and I went, this is probably going to be like a good film as opposed to like what I expect from like just slasher movies which is basically like people in predicaments you would never really put yourself in. And then someone's trying to kill you with a chainsaw. It makes no sense to me. I just don't get it. But there are people that like it. And that's cool, too. Different strokes for different folks. But this film, I, I'm looking forward to this because I really like Zombieland. I was really surprised at like the levels they would go to to get the joke and to find the comedy in those moments. Really liked it. If you haven't seen it. This is not for the faint of heart because it is zombies and they do some pretty cool stuff as far as like trying to kill the zombies and how they do it. Because, um, you know, 
sometimes you don't have a gun sometimes you don't have an axe so what do you have that's what you got to use and they do a pretty good job of covering that in the film it's a lot of fun definitely check it out are you excited about the cast and the original director coming back to do this i hope you are if you are comment below let me know what you thought about Zombieland. What was your favorite scene in it? What was your favorite joke? Do you, th do you think they're still going to have the Hummer or 10 years later, will they have upgraded to like some other car that actually gets good gas mileage? Who knows? Let me know what you think in the comments section. All right. Next up, this is coming to us from Variety. Matt Smith, Patient Zero is set for August 14th release date. Now, I was not familiar with this story. I was not familiar with this film. I didn't know what was going on, but in the article, they talk about how the story really quick. This is right from the article. So if you're clicked on the link and you're following along, here you go. The story takes place after a super virus has turned humankind into highly intelligent streamlined killers. Smith portrays an asymptomatic victim who can communicate with the infected and must lead the last survivors on a hunt for patient zero and a cure. Uh, Agnes Dine and Clive Standen from Vikings are also set to star, and it's going to be directed by Stefan Ruzowitzki. So this sounds pretty interesting. It sounds like it's going to be uh, like kind of like a survival action film, right? But with, you know, people who are infected with a virus. The interesting thing to me was this is going to be done by Sony Screen Gems. And Sony Screen Gems, when I see films like this in this kind of genre, I always go to the Underworld films, which I like. The Underworld series is a guilty pleasure of mine. Vampires, werewolves, I'm with it. I dig it. It's hip. I'm there. But then you've got stuff. Uh, you've got other films that they've come out with that they've done. Specifically, the Resident Evil franchise, where you're just like, Whew, these films just, in my opinion, they just keep going down and down and down and down and down. It's like they make them, they put them out, they make a bunch of money, and that's it. And I, I, I just don't get it. So with Screen Gems, I'm always hit or miss. But then Screen Gems does stuff like Don't Breathe. They do Proud Mary. Um, what else have they done here? I just pulled up their thing real quick. Dear John. So they have this kind of expansive catalog where it's not just like the goofy films like Underworld and Resident Evil. Then they like dive into like more constructed, serious stories and worlds and stuff like that. So I was kind of like, well, maybe it'll be good. Maybe it's not. But then in the article... It talks about how the release is actually going to be digital and video on demand. So it's going straight to DVD and streaming, right? And I was like, oof. So already I was like, okay, it's Screen Gems, which can either do something really awesome or they put out just like popcorn, popcorn munching madness, right? With Underworld and uh, I just totally blanked on the other one. Resident Evil. There we go. Hi, this is live. This is what happens live. Um, so you got these films like Resident Evil and Underworld, but then you also have like the more intense, more real, more dramatic stuff that, do, do, that they do. So I was like, okay, maybe. But then they say it's going to be just digital release. And I was like, ooh, man. But then let's get even more confusing. They say that it is going to be released in select theaters a month later. So the film comes out digital on August 14th, and then it comes out in theaters on September 14th. Now, typically when you release it, like select theaters limited, typically, not always, but you're doing that because like you want to have like Oscar consideration, right? Because it's got to be released in theaters to be considered, right? So I was like, well, what, 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 what is going on in this film that they would need to release? Is, is there something like special effects, makeup, costumes? Like, are they going for something like incredible uh, as far as like the more behind the scenes stuff goes like that you could win Oscars for? Because I, I can't imagine that they're going up for best picture, right? But maybe there's something like in the background that they're doing that they want to kind of be considered for. Like I said, costume work, special effects, makeup, all of those little behind the scenes that are the working pieces that make the movie as opposed to just the final product. I don't know, but I was like, that's interesting. They're going to release it, stream, and then a month later it's going into the theaters. And I was like, there's a lot going on with this story. So I'm curious to see kind of what happens with this film once it drops on VOD and people can stream this digitally and then, you know, seeing what theaters and how many theaters it hits a month later. So after everyone can watch it at home, then they're going to release it in theaters. It's kind of backwards to me. Um, and because it's so unique in its story, that's why I wanted to talk about it. Cause you have screen gems, which can be awesome or goofy. Then you have straight to DVD, which usually isn't a good sign. But then after it's been in theaters for a month, it's coming out in select theaters, which would typically be done for something that wants to be considered for awards. 
So it's like, what is going on? Are they just doing this to mess with our heads? We don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And that is it for the news this week. We are going to move into the movie review segment right now. And then right after that, don't go anywhere. Because like I said, we've got what's arriving in theaters this week. What's hitting DVD and Blu-ray for your home theaters this week. Certified rad. And we're also going to take a look at this thing that's trending on Twitter called put Muppets in a movie, right? So you take everybody out but one star and you surround them with Muppets. We're going to take a look at a couple films that I would like to see this done with just as something fun for this week's show. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. We are going to get into the movie reviews. And then, like I said, theaters, DVD, Certified Rad, and Muppets are all coming your way right after these movie reviews are completed. So here we go. Skyscraper and Hotel Transylvania 3 summer vacation the tallest building in the history of the world is about to open its residential floors but first a private security agency must approve the safety measures and protocols the villains strike quickly to destroy this building before it can be insured which means this will be a massive financial loss for the building's owner but the villains did not count on one man his wife, and his two children attempting to save the day. So, does Skyscraper live up to the over-the-top, action-packed, explosion-palooza promised in the trailers? Or is this summer blockbuster busted? Let's talk about it in this review. There was a time when we as a society collectively decided that summer action blockbusters needed to feel a little bit more realistic. Collectively, we all somehow agreed that ridiculously placed safety measures, foreign villains with European accents, lots of explosions, tons of gunfire, and perfectly placed one-liners weren't cool anymore. And so we went through a period of time where these action summer blockbuster movies felt a little bit more grounded. Throw all of that right out the window because this film celebrates everything that was awesome about all of those summer action blockbusters from yesteryear. This film is testosterone-fueled madness that seems to enjoy every minute of itself. And I enjoyed every minute of it enjoying itself. That sounded weird. Let's just keep moving on. Okay, back to the film. The plot of the film is pretty simple, and that's okay. This movie knew exactly what it wanted to deliver and the trailers prepared us perfectly for what we got on the big screen. There are a lot of working pieces in this film and that was probably my only issue with this movie. There are just so many subplots in this film from beginning to end. We have friends and partners betraying each other. We have extortion, revenge. We have a kid with asthma trying to escape the burning building and the protagonist in this film is disabled. Plus, we've got everything going on with the two expendable henchmen and the helicopters and lots and lots of duct tape. Again, surprisingly, it's just overstuffed. However, the writers did a really good job of weaving everything in so that by the end of the film, everything makes sense. By the time the film concludes, we understand why A plus B equals the skyscraper movie. Also, before we move on, I do want to mention that everything that happens at the beginning of the film makes sense by the end of the film, and that's important to remember. Now let's talk about the action, because the action in this film was what I was there to see, and I'm happy to report that it delivers all of the action scenes and sequences gloriously. We have lots and lots of explosions. Fire consumes a building. We've got helicopters, some of which explode. And then we've got the local law enforcement trying to figure out who is actually the bad guy in this story? And they're doing their own little manhunt throughout the story. Finally, we've got cranes that move around and people can jump off of into the building. We've got vodka. We've got duct tape. We have a sword. Yes, that's right, an actual sword. There's grenades. There's an elevator that plummets from 90 floors up all the way down to the first floor on the ground level. This is non-stop, people. And then, just to make sure that we're really capturing the spirit of those action movies, The Rock is able to deliver a one-liner or two throughout the film. For example, when he gets the piece of metal shard stuck in his shoulder, he pulls it out, he cleans it with vodka, he wraps it with duct tape, then he makes a joke about duct tape. 
Then he takes a beat, waits for a minute, lets the joke set in, and then he takes a drink of the vodka. It's little moments like this throughout the film that really elevated my enjoyment because it shows they were really paying attention to what they were doing and how much fun they knew we wanted to have as an audience walking into the theater. And finally, one last example. So the safety protocols, when you're gonna reset them, that all has to be done on the outside of the building, in the middle of the building, and that is surrounded by a swirling fan. So the rock literally has to climb down the building, scale across the glass using duct tape gloves and duct tape on his shoes, again, more duct tape, then he's got to repel down. It gets so ridiculous. Then he's got to jump through the fan to get there and then jump back through the fan to get back. And as I'm sitting there watching this all unfold, just having thoughts in my head about how ridiculous it is, but still so much fun, they give The Rock a one-liner that completely captured all of the thoughts that were happening in my head, happens on screen. They knew exactly what they were doing. They knew exactly what the audience was thinking and they delivered it to us in such a fun way. Skyscraper is playing at your local movie theater right now and I am recommending a big screen viewing of this film. The magic of this film rests entirely on the fact that it knows exactly what it is and it celebrates that 110%. And it makes no apologies for it either. And I will not apologize for how much I enjoyed this movie and my time spent in the theater watching it. This is an abundance of action movie goodies that are all just swirled together for us to enjoy in the theater with strangers who also just want a fun summer action blockbuster. Again, the trailers did a great job of preparing us for what we would experience on the big screen in the theater. And because of that and all of the other reasons that we've just covered in this review, Skyscraper is getting both high fives from this guy. Skyscraper is playing at your local movie theater right now. Be sure to bring your tortilla chips because this movie delivers all of the cheese for the nachos. Go check it out. <laughs> Dracula is lonely, but his business is doing well. His daughter begins noticing that he's not quite acting like himself lately, and she just believes that's because he's overworked and stressed. So she decides to plan a fun family summer vacation for everyone. The monsters take to the high seas, for a cruise to the lost city of Atlantis, but things aboard the ship are not quite as they appear. So, does Hotel Transylvania 3 Summer Vacation deliver the spooky fun that we've come to expect from this franchise? Or should this film be lost with the city of Atlantis? Let's talk about it in this review. The first family of monsters is back for a story that explores finding true love for the second time. Dracula and his daughter are convinced that monsters can only find love once in their lifetime, which is a very long time. So Dracula has been existing for some time now with the belief that he'll never find love again. He believes that he is destined for a loveless existence. However, his daughter doesn't pick up on his loneliness right away. She just naturally assumes that because he's so overworked and stressed trying to keep the hotel operational that that has got to be what has him acting weird. And so, as you heard at the top of this review, they take to the open water for a fun family summer vacation. And if that's all the movie was, if the story just ended there, as just a fun family vacation that gets a little silly and gets a little weird, I guarantee you this film would not be as enjoyable as it was. The lighthearted nature of the characters and the predicaments that they're in are definitely highlighting the fun that we have come to expect in this franchise. However, in this movie, they really dive into deep examinations on some pretty big topics. And these are philosophical debates that you can have with what they're discussing and what they're showing us in the movie theater. For example, living so long that you literally become what you hate. They touch on that in this picture. And they also look at love conquering hate as a main topic and a main point and theme for this movie. The main antagonist in this movie is Van Helsing and he is voiced by the very talented and very funny comedian, Jim Gaffigan. His family has been hunting monsters for as long as they've been around, and he is not giving up on his family heritage. So much so that halfway through the film, we find out that he actually becomes a monster himself to hunt these terrors. He creates a machine, and that machine literally keeps him alive so that he can hunt Dracula and his ghoulish friends. 
In all honesty, he kind of looked like a janky version of MODOK from Marvel Comics. In this movie, he's a head with a robot body, similar to MODOK, but obviously MODOK is a much more advanced villain in the comics. So it was interesting to see that Van Helsing has become a mechanized organism designed only for killing monsters. And that just felt eerily similar. The plot twist in this film happens with Van Helsing's great-granddaughter, Erica, who is the captain of the ship, and Dracula. She is completely bought into the family heritage and is using this ship to trap Dracula and his friends to kill him once and for all. However, as it goes in these stories, by the end of the movie, we see that she completely flips and turns it around and falls in love with Dracula. In fact, by the end of the film, we see that they're both madly in love with each other. And it was the progression this story goes on that really kind of highlights and shows just how difficult it is for a Van Helsing to kill Dracula as we see moments with them on the ship, underneath the water, in a booby-trapped lair, and as well, the city of Atlantis. So while the film is highlighting how difficult it is for a Van Helsing to kill Dracula, Dracula is completely unaware that she's trying to kill him, and his natural charm and his natural demeanor eventually wins her over by the end of the film. It's pretty creative stuff. Hotel Transylvania 3 Summer Vacation is playing at your local movie theater right now. And this is a fun family summer flick. So if you have kids, nieces and nephews, you're definitely going to want to see this on the big screen. However, for the rest of us, you will probably enjoy this film just as much, if not a little bit more, from the comfort of your own home. So maybe give it a watch once it's available on your preferred streaming service or DVD. There is a lot of really great voice talent in this film. Plus, as I stated earlier, this film does explore some deep philosophical topics. Love conquers hate. Don't eventually become the monsters that you hunt. Positive energy can drive out negative energy. And probably the most important question, why has Chris Parnell never voiced an animated fish before? He voices all of the fish on the cruise ship and his dry delivery and his humor was done so wonderfully, and especially with the animation and how they drew the fish to match that tone that he has was just glorious fun. So because of all of these reasons, Hotel Transylvania 3 is getting at least one high five from this guy. If you've got kids, nieces or nephews, definitely take them to the theater and check this movie out. All right, and we are back. There it is, Skyscraper Hotel Transylvania 3. Some of you may be surprised that Skyscraper actually got more high fives. But again, each movie is rated by itself. What are they trying to achieve, right? Did they set up, did they successfully achieve what they were trying to set up? And then we kind of go from there, right? What was the story they wanted to tell? Did they do it? <clears throat> and I think Skyscraper knocked it out of the park. Is it a movie that I'm going to be like, you definitely, yeah, you guys got to go see this. <clears throat> to people who don't like action movies, Probably not. But if someone's like, I love action movies, I just want to go sit in a theater and not think and just have fun. Boom. Skyscraper is the movie for you. Kids, families, definitely go check out Hotel Transylvania 3. All right. Let's move now into the next part here. And let's take a look at what's hitting theaters this week. Sorry, I had to take another drink of water. <clears throat> Allergies are acting up today. My apologies. All right, so we have Equalizer 2, Mamma Mia, here we go again, and Unfriended, The Dark Web. So out of these three films, I am most excited for Equalizer 2. Not only is it Denzel's first sequel ever in all of his movie making, this is his first sequel, but he's coming back and it looks like it's going to be really good. He's working with the same director, um, if memory serves. So... We should, be, we should be in for a really good time. Both of the trailers I've enjoyed. You can watch my reactions for those on the Stardust app. Mamma Mia, here we go again. I don't know that I've actually seen Mamma Mia the entire way through or if I've just seen bits and pieces of it on television. I can't recall. But I got to check that out before I go see Mamma Mia 2. And then Unfriended the Dark Web. I'm not really... That's not my bag. I don't, I don't really know what's going on there, so I probably won't make that one. But, you know, like I said, in the top 10... We still have Uncle Drew. We've got Sorry to Bother You. We've got Equalizer 2. We've got Mamma Mia 2. That's four movies right there. I mean, that's a pretty busy weekend if I can get out to see all of them. So I'll have to wait and see. But let's find out what's hitting DVD this weekend. 
<coughs> Excuse me. My goodness, what a show. All right, so this weekend we got Truth or Dare, You Were Never Really Here, Disobedience, Isle of Dogs, Traffic, Rampage, I Feel Pretty, and Super Troopers 2. So quite a week for DVD releases. I did not see Truth or Dare. I did not see Traffic, Disobedience, or You Were Never Really Here. I've heard really good things about You Were Never Really Here. It's a very dark film from what I've heard, but a super good story, super good acting. So I'm interested to check that out and see if it lives up to the hype and then create my own opinion based on that. Isle of Dogs, one of my favorite films of the year. Love Isle of Dogs. Rampage was fun. I feel pretty. Did not see as I stated. But Super Troopers 2, if you're a fan of the Super Troopers franchise, you're definitely not going to be disappointed with Super Troopers 2. But out of all of these films, uh, I've heard incredible things about You Were Never Really Here. Again, super dark, so you have been warned. Uh, but Isle of Dogs, hands down, out of all of these, is the film I'm most excited for. Now, Isle of Dogs, Rampage, and Super Troopers 2, those reviews are all on the page, on the movie review page right now, so you can check out my review for those. And we'll get ready to move into the next segment here. Let me know in the comments section, are you excited about any of these films hitting theaters and DVD? If so, which ones? And what did you think about the movies that are hitting DVD if you've seen them? Before we move into Certified Rad, I do want to give a birthday shout out real quick to Die Hard. That's right. Die Hard, one of my favorite action movies of all time, is turned 30 years old as of yesterday. 30 years old for Die Hard. So happy birthday, Die Hard. Happy birthday, Bruce Willis and everybody else attached to that film. 30 years old. My goodness. It's been a great long run we have had together. Die Hard movie. All right. Let's move into the last segment now, which is Certified Rad. You guys never know what's going to drop, but I can guarantee whatever drops will most definitely be Certified Rad. If this is your first time watching, Certified Rad is just something that I find or something someone sends me that I think is pretty cool. And then if I read it over and I'm like, yeah, this is super rad. I certify it. It's Certified Rad. We talk about it right here. So the link for this again in the description box below. And this is coming to us from today, today.com. And this is about Tammy Waddell. She was a teacher for 25 years, a retired elementary school teacher. And what she would do while she was teaching is she made it her, basically her life passion as a teacher to help kids in need. So what she did is she would try and get them like, you know, care packages and stuff like that. And then she would hand them out to the kids at school who needed them, uh, which is pretty impressive. Like teachers in general, right? We all know teachers don't make that much money. So for her to like go out of her way to try and help bring care packages in for the kids that are also like kids, kids in need, low income families, et cetera, is super rad. So already, I mean, that's a pretty certified rad story by itself, but let's go even further than that. So unfortunately, she has passed away. Uh, she had colon cancer and she died um, last month at the age of 58. So pretty sad news, especially when you, I mean, anybody dying is sad, but then when you have somebody who's actively helping the community and trying to be a positive force and a positive force for change in the lives of kids, and then they go, that's definitely a bummer. Um, but what she asked for at, uh, I guess, in at her funeral, like one of her things that she said she wanted when she died, she didn't want flowers. She said, don't bring flowers. But instead, in lieu of flowers, what I want you to bring is backpacks full of supplies for kids in need. She just keeps going, right? She knows her time is up, but she still wants to make sure that these kids are getting help. So what happened? At the funeral, more than 100 backpacks full of supplies and everything else for kids in need were brought, which is incredible. So everybody not only paid attention to her wishes, but they paid attention to the fact that, you know, this was her legacy and they wanted to help honor and respect her legacy and carry it forward. So instead of flowers at her funeral, they just brought in backpacks full of stuff for kids in need. And when you can create a life that resonates that far outside of just yourself, that it impacts the people coming to visit you one last time and they want to partake in what your legacy is, you can guarantee that that is certified rad. So check out that link again. That's from today.com. That's in the description box below. Before we sign off this week, before we kick it off, say goodbye, and I let you get back to your Monday, I wanted to cover, again, there's just this thing that keeps popping up on Twitter. And I'll just see it like retweeted and someone will say like, here's a movie, like redo a movie. Like you can have one cast member, one of the original cast members, but everybody else has got to be a Muppet. Who is... 
Who is the actor? What is the movie that everybody, that all of the Muppets are going to redo for the big screen, right? So I was like, oh, that's fun. That's a fun idea. So I came up with a couple just real quick. First, Goldfinger. That's right. Old James Bond. Sean Connery has got to be the actor that is still James Bond. But then I want all of the Muppets to do everything else because I really want to hear a Muppet as, you know, he's all tied down to the table getting ready to be killed. I just want to hear that Muppet go, no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. I think that would be pretty cool. And then next is Blade, the first one. We're keeping Wesley Snipes. But then I want Wesley Snipes running around with his sword, killing Muppet vampires. I think that would be a lot of fun. Next, we're going to go a completely different route. So we had James Bond. We have a comic book movie with Blade. Now we're going to go into romantic comedy. That's right. Romantic comedy. I'm looking at you, Matthew McConaughey. And you're going to stay in as your role for How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. I want to see you courting a Muppet. And I want to see this Muppet trying to drop you like a hot rock in 10 days or less. I think that would be quite funny. All right. And last but not least, Atomic Blonde, Charlize Theron. You're coming back. And we're going to see you recreate that incredible fight scene in the hallway through the apartments. That's right. With Muppets. I think that would be super fun. So there are my castings right there goldfinger sean connery blade with wesley snipes how to lose a guy in 10 days with matthew mcconaughey and atomic blonde with Charlize theron let me know in the comments section what film would you like to see redone with muppets and which of the original cast are you keeping in said film all right everybody that's it for me i'm jeremy bernanski i'm getting out of here I'm going to let you guys get back to your Monday morning. Thank you again so much for joining me right here on YouTube with another brand new episode of Bernanski's vlog every Monday at 10 a.m. PST right here. Again, if you aren't already subscribed, click that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get the notifications when new content drops. So we got movie reviews dropping throughout the week and you don't want to miss those. Also, make sure you follow us on Twitter and that's at Bernanski's vlog and then also on the Stardust app at Bernanski's vlog. That's where I do all of the movie trailer reviews. Like I said, we're closing in on 200 movie trailer reviews. Lots of content there. You're going to want to check us out. All right, everybody. Again, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, give me that thumbs up because that's right. The thumbs up helps people who like movie related shows find this movie related show right here on YouTube. All right, everybody. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next Monday. And until then, good night and good luck.